Hi, I'm Tim Abdallah. I'm Head of Art at Menzies Art Brands. On the 27th of June this year, we'll be offering our mid-year auction of important Australian and international paintings. Uh, I'll be taking you through some of the highlights of that auction today, so I hope you uh, look forward to the sale as much as we do. Uh, the auction comprises a number of very important, very key lots. We're very excited about some of the more, more valuable items in our sale, but there's also a number of uh, pictures at the lower end of the market which will suit all buyers. Grace Cossington Smith worked at a period in Australian history of Australian art which was dominated by women and their modesty I guess in some of the way in the way they presented their work uh, it characterizes the art of the era. I'm talking about Grace Cossington Smith, uh, Margaret Preston and Clarice Beckett all of whom are now regarded uh, as very very significant figures but in their own time, were almost housewife artists, if that can be the term that I could use. Cossington Smith's painting, The Wildflowers, painted in 1944, and uh, which will be offered in our 27th of June auction, uh, has estimates of seventy to ninety thousand dollars. is a very fine example of her work. It's a particularly nice, large composition and features her very precise and very free and very organic and at the same time very crystal, crystallised brush strokes. It's her brush strokes which give her work that vivacity and liveliness. And uh, this picture is a very typical, a very classic example of her work. Rick Amore is probably Melbourne's best painter. He, for many years, he worked very discreetly and quietly in Melbourne through the 60s and the 70s. Uh, he was a student of John Brack's, or he regarded John Brack as his mentor. And when, in the 1990s, when the Australian art market was going through the doldrums, the one shining light in Melbourne was Rick Amore, who continued to have these wonderful exhibitions, which were sell-out shows. One after the other was sell-out exhibitions. And nowadays we expect, when we put Rick's work into our auctions, we expect bidding from all over the place. Sydney, there are a lot of Amore collectors in Sydney. Uh, his work is collected in Queensland and Perth and internationally as well. We're blessed with two particularly nice examples of works from his museum series. These are works which show, depict the interiors of museums, the stillness and the quietness and the, the dusty dryness of museums is embodied in these works and sometimes you see the figures of people who are looking at the displays they're very quiet and very still and this stillness is what intrigues Rick. Rick's work is all about quietness and this kind of enigma. It's an enigma that he's trying to develop and generate in his work. We've got two Rick and Moores in this auction. They're both uh, equally good works and in fact it'll be interesting to see where our buyers preferences lie one of them is estimated at 50 to 60, the other one 55 to 75, so they're both around the same area. Uh, Amor's work has been sold for much higher prices, so we think these are well priced and well suited to collectors. Uh, intriguing pictures, very, very interesting pictures at that price. One of my favourite paintings in this auction is a Geoffrey Smart composition from 1971. The painting is called Holiday was included in all of the major smart retrospectives, including the most recent one organised in South Australia and also shown in uh, the Tarawara Museum in Victoria's Yarra Valley. Now, this painting is uh, one of those quirky, alienated industrial landscapes for which smart is best known, and yet it does have that outre quality which I love, the series of balconies projecting out into space with just a single figure. Smart manages to create a picture which is intriguing visually and yet at the same time has the sense of alienation which people love in his work. Well, they love it, but it is it, puzzlingly intriguing, let's say. We estimate the Jeffrey Smart's painting Holiday will sell for between $750,000 and $950,000. In my opinion, it's one of his 10 best paintings and uh, fully worthy of those estimates. In 1934, when Fairweather arrived in Melbourne, Ian Fairweather arrived in Melbourne, Melbourne was a very, very restricted and limited in its artistic opportunities. And yet, he had the good fortune of meeting 
George Bell and Jock Fraser and a number of other artists, Lena Bryans in particular, uh, who gave him encouragement and supported him. These are the people who made uh, were the most important people in the Melbourne art scene at that time, and Fairweather's contribution to them and their contribution to him are what makes this painting such an intriguing and interesting picture. Melbourne was a fairly dry, dull place in 1934. Hard to imagine what Fairweather made of this place, but in fact uh, it didn't agree with him and he left after six months he was out of here. He travelled extensively in Asia, living in China, in Peking, uh, and also in Bali. And he arrived in Australia as part of a peripatetic, if you can use that term, or nomadic existence that characterised his life, his long life, uh, until the late 50s when he finally found a home on Bribie Island in Queensland. He'd already uh, been involved in the First World War here, as everyone knows. He was captured in the first weeks of the First World War and spent the war in internment. And during that internment, he learnt Chinese from a book and became acquainted with Chinese art. And when the war was over, he made his way to China and the painting which we are offering on our 27th of June auction, his village, painted in 1934, uh, includes all of his Chinese experiences, not only the subject, but the technique in which it is painted. Even though it was painted in Melbourne, in Australia, uh, it is a strictly Asian and almost entirely Chinese in its, in its intellectual basis and in its intellectual background. It's also a particularly beautiful picture. It'll be sold on the 27th of June, at the Menzies auction, 120 to 140,000 is its estimate range. It's a wonderful painting. We're very fortunate in this auction to have a wonderful sculpture by Auguste Rodin. La femme accroupie, grande modèle avec une terrasse plus haute, is from Rodin's most important period. In 1880, he produced The Gates of Hell, arguably his magnum opus, uh, as well as The Thinker, which is probably his best known piece. So La Femme Groupie is uh, from the high point of Rodin's work, and arguably the high point of modernism in France. The period we're talking about is uh, the end of Manet and Degas, um, Seurat and Matisse are not yet on the scene, but it's that period where French art was producing numerous wonderful artists and uh, the masterpieces which now fill the museums of this world, of our world. And uh, the sculpture we're talking about is a museum piece, there's no doubt about that. Um, it is a life-size, fully rendered figure of a woman crouching. It would not be out of place in any museum. Uh, recent interest in his work uh, on the international markets indicate that $15.3 million, uh, which was paid for an early casting of The Thinker in a recent uh, London, oh, sorry, New York auction, indicates that uh, our price of around a million, maybe one and a quarter million dollars, those are our estimates, uh, it could be fair. Uh, it could be very fair and it could be an opportunity for someone to have uh, a very important sculpture by probably the world's greatest sculptor. This is where, well, I'm not exaggerating to say that uh, amongst sculptors of the world, he is possibly rated by most sculptors as the most important sculptor in, in history. Uh, Michelangelo may have a difference of opinion. I look forward to seeing you at our viewings in Melbourne and Sydney prior to the auction on the 27th of June. I hope you'll get an opportunity to come and see the objects we're presenting and the paintings. It's a wonderful auction. I look forward to your participation in the sale and I wish you the best of luck with your bids.